Kilinai means to believe in, to have faith, to trust. It took us a long time to have her. She was one of those kids that we had to fight and believe and pray for every day. But we definitely love to golf together. That's something that Michael has introduced us to. And so now we do it as a family. It's for selfish reasons. <laughs> it's so that I can go golf whenever I want and I just bring them along. Every minute that you get to spend with your family and with your friends is precious. And you know that tomorrow's not guaranteed. I think people don't like to, to face the reality that medically something's wrong with you. Tomorrow makes one year since you know everything happened. So that morning, I thought I was just sick, would sleep for like three hours, get up for 15 minutes and go back to bed. I did all the checks, the COVID tests and everything, and nothing was wrong. And I said, okay, well, you wanna go to the doctors? No, okay. I think she pressed me another few hours later and she's like, you need to think about going to the doctors. And so I was like, uh, all right, fine, let's, let's just go. When Michael came in, he originally just thought he had bad indigestion. It had been going on for 13 to 14 hours. But we always do an EKG just to make sure that it's not a heart attack. And I think it was about 20 seconds into the reading, and his face went from happy to like, oh my gosh, something is about to happen. And I'm like, oh, this can't be good. He was having a STEMI, which means massive heart attack. It's a blockage in your heart where you're not getting oxygen to that part of your heart, and it could be fatal and deadly. So at that point, I told him, you know, I was just going to sleep it off tonight. And they go, if you had gone to bed tonight, you probably wouldn't have woken up tomorrow. So it finally hit me that, oh my gosh, I could die. Michael had a 100% blockage in an artery that provides blood flow to the heart. Time is of the essence that really the earlier that we treat this, the more likelihood that they will have recovery from this heart attack. My whole life flashed before my eyes of what it would be without him. I just lost my dad to this. I'm not losing my husband to this. This can't happen. And I looked at him and I said, please don't die. I can't do this again. Our angiogram and the treatment involves opening up the artery, restoring the blood flow, and then using a stent to keep the artery open so that it can continue to have blood flow and recover. Immediately when they cleared it out and then they put the stents in, my whole being changed. Like, I felt better. I was like, oh, something's different. Michael's procedure went great. We were able to open up the artery. He did extremely well during the case. I see him being rolled out in the gurney, and he's awake. And I said, are you all right? And he's like, yup. <laughs> I was still there for a couple more days um, while they monitored and made sure everything was OK. I'm proud of the care that we gave him. I'm proud that we were able to give him the second chance at life. The one thing that really stood out to me about Polymomi was just the staff and everybody who just made me feel like they cared about me. They cared about my health. They cared about me getting better. We just want to show that what Polymomi can do to make them feel like we got them, they're in good hands. It's treating them like family. And I think that the more you treat them as a family and as a community, I think that overall leads people to have better recovery and also to become more aware of their own health. If I had all the doctors and nurses in one room that helped me that day, I would just say thank you. I survived because of all that you do. I'm truly blessed for your choice to be in the profession that you're in.